Welcome back to my channel. And if you are visiting this space for the first time, you are also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the types of pelvics that we have using this image by the side here. This is the configuration of the pelvics. And this pelvics is seen to come in different forms. In this lecture, we'll be highlighting the characteristics or the features that each of the different types of pelvics presents. First one we'll be looking at is the gynecoid pelvics. This is the most common pelvic that is seen in female. If you look deep through the name, you see that it is related to female. This type of pelvic is seen to present a rounded pelvic inlet. This is where we say we have the pelvic inlet here, which is also referred to as the pelvic brain. This is what subdivides the entire pelvic cavity into the greater pelvics up and the lesser pelvics in the lower part. So this pelvic inlet is what is highlighted here in this image, and this is seen to be rounded in the gynecoid pelvics. And this is attributed to the less prominent of the sacra promotory. This is the sacra promotory here, herald in blue. The sacra promotory is an eminence of the first sacral bone. This sacra promotory is seen to be less prominent in gynecoid pelvics. And it is because of this that more space is created at this posterior part. Hence, it is now extending into the space of the pelvic inlet. And this is where it's seen to create more space at this region. We also have the pubic heart. The pubic heart is seen at the pelvic outlet. And this is seen to be wider in a gynecoid pelvis. Let's try and use this image also up here for illustration. We know that on one side of the pelvic bone, we have the hip bone. And this hip bone is structurally made up of the ilium, the pubics, and also the ischium. At the upper part here is where we have the ilium. At the anterior part here is where we have the pubic. And at the posterior lower part behind is where we have the ischium. So in the anterior part where we have the pubic is where the formation of the pubic heart occurs. So we know that in the pubic bone, we have the body of the pubic bone, and this is what is seen to be harrowed here in black. The body of the pubic bone is seen to connect with the body of the pubic bone, also of the hip bone of the other side, and this is where we have the formation of the pubic symphysis. This is the pubic symphysis here, harrowed here at this point. So it is the body of the pubic bone that contributes to the formation of the pubic symphysis. From the body of the pubic bone, we have two extensions. We have a superior extension, and this is what is seen to be harrowed here in black. And we also have the inferior extension, which is also arrowed here in black. It is specifically the inferior extension of the pubic bone that is seen to form the pubic heart. And this is where we have the formation of the pubic heart. So we have the inferior ramus from the body of the pubic bone on one side. And we also have the inferior ramus from the body of the pubic bone on the other side. And these two rami, which are inferior extensions from the bodies of the pubic bone that are seen to form this pubic heart. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in red. This pubic heart is seen to be wider in a gynecoid pelvis. And what this means is that it's going to be creating more space at the pelvic heartlet. Let's try and use this image down here to give a better illustration to how a wide pubic heart will contribute to the expansion around the pelvic heartlet. So if you use this image down here, this is where we have the inferior ramus on one side, and this is where we have the inferior ramus also on the other side. And these two ramus will form this arc-like configuration around the pelvic heartlet. So this is where we have the formation of the pubic heart here, also highlighted in dotted red. This image is the inferior view, and the view that is being projected in this lower image is the pelvic heartlet. So it's good for us to take note of that. And if there's an expansion around this region, it means that the ischial tuberosity, which is harrowed here, will also be wider. So because of this expansion, it is going to be pushing the ischial tuberosity veracity also further wide apart. And also, because we have the expansion of the pubic heart, there's also going to be the expansion of the sacrotuberous ligament. And this is what is arrowed here in green. So you have the sacrotuberous ligament also being pushed 
also wide apart because of the expansion that is created around the pubic hair. And if you look at all these structures that we have elected, it's catuberosity and also the sacrotuberous ligament. You see that these structures contribute to the alignment of the pelvic heart legs. I've also put up a lecture on the pelvic heart legs. If you've not checked that lecture, or please kindly go and do so. In that lecture, we try to highlight the structures that form the alignment around the pelvic heart legs. And this structure, which include the ischial tuberosity and also the sacrotuberous ligament are seen to contribute to the alignment of the pelvic heart length. So the wider the pubic heart is, also the wider the structures that are related to it also will be. So that is why we have an expansion around this place. And what this means at the end is that the pelvic heart length will also be wide. So it's good for us to be able to relate to why the presentation of a particular region we also have an effect on other regions that are also related to it. This is the kind of expression that is seen around the pelvic outlet. And it's good for us to be able to establish that. We also have a curvature created by the sacrum. We know that the sacrum forms the pelvic spine. At the posterior part of the pelvic bone, we have the sacrum. The sacrum and the gynecoid pelvis is seen to be curved and it's curved backwards. And because of this, you see that it is going to be creating more space due to the curvature that it creates around this region. And at the end, you see that the pelvic heart legs will be wide. And this will occur as a result of the wider pubic heart, which of course will lead to the wideness of the other structures that are related to it to also move further apart. Then we also have the curvature that is created by the sacrum. All this transformation around this region will lead to a wider pelvic outlet. This is what is seen to be elected here in blue. So you see that the pelvic inlet is already seen to be wide due to the less prominence that is created by the sacral promontory because it's going to be creating more space around the posterior region. We also have the expansion of the pubic half, which will also lead to the expansion of the pelvic heartlet. All these characteristics put together, we then provide a favorable condition for vagina birth. So women that are seen to carry the gynecoid pelvis will be able to deliver their babies through vagina birth with ease. So going to the second type of pelvis, this is the android pelvis. And android from the name is related to males. So this kind of pelvis is seen to be more common in male. The characteristics of this kind of pelvis for the pelvic inlet, which is also referred to as the pelvic brain, is seen to be configured in heart shape pattern. And this is what is highlighted here in red. So you see that the configuration here is not seen to be circular as seen in the gynecoid pelvis. It is seen to form a triangular or heart shape configuration. And what is responsible for this is also the sacral promotory. If you look at the sacral promotory in the android pelvis, you see that it is more prominent. And because of the prominent Prominency that is created by the sacral promontory is going to be chopping into the pelvic inlet at this posterior part. And this is what will lead to this indentation that is created here, thereby giving the configuration of the pelvic inlet a heart shaped configuration. So this is what is presented here. And what this means is that the pelvic inlet will not be as wide as what will be presented in the gynecoid pelvis. So it's good for us to be able to relate why some of these changes occur. Then you also have an angulated pubic heart. If you look at this structure, this is where we say we have the pubic heart here. We already tried to illustrate how the pubic heart is formed from the pubic bone. This is formed from the contribution from the inferior ramine from the pubic bone on one side and also on the other side. So at the unite at this point, they form an act like configuration. And this is what is referred to as a pubic heart. The pubic heart in an android pelvis it seems to be angulated, and because of this, it is seen to be less wider. If it is less wider, it's going to lead to a reduced pelvic outlet. So if you try to use this image down here, this is where we have the pubic arc here, highlighted in red on one side and also on the other side, because we know that it is formed by the inferior rami of the pubic bone on both sides. So this is where you have the pubic arc. And we say that if this pubic arc is less wider, as seen in android pelvis, this is going to lead to the ischial tuberosity also pulled more closely 
together. And this is the Iskechuberosity here, harrowed in yellow. We have one on one side and we have another one on the other side. So you see that because this angulature that is created by the pubic arc is smaller, so it tends to be less wide apart. And this will also be pulling the ischiotuberosity also closer. Um, if you go more posteriorly, we have the psychotuberous ligament. And this is what is seen to be hurried here in green. We have two also, one on each side. This is also will be pulled together because of the angulated pubic hack. So this kind of configuration that is presented by the pubic hack will also lead to a reduced pelvic outlet. And if you look at all these structures that we've highlighted, that's the ischiotuberosity and also the sacrotuberous ligament, these two structures, we say that the they form alignment with the pelvic heartless. Also contributing to this is the sacrum. The sacrum in the android pelvic is seen to be straightened. Remember in the gynecoid pelvic, we say it's, it's curved, but in android pelvic, it, it is straightened. And if it is straightened in this configuration, it means it will not be creating space around the posterior region. So if you sum up all these characteristics, you see that the pelvic heartless will be less wider. And this is what is highlighted here in blue. And this is why this type of pelvic is difficult for vagina birth. If you go back to the pelvic inlet, you see that the configuration is not as wide as what is presented in the gynecoid pelvic. If you also go back to the pelvic outlet, you also see that the configuration also is not as wide as what is presented in the gynecoid pelvic. So you see that this space may not be able to accommodate the head of the baby. And this is why it is difficult for women carrying this type of pelvic to experience the vagina birth. And this is where other forms of bait may be considered such as Caesarea section. So we see that the different type of pelvics are presented with different types of features. And these features also will determine whether vagina birth can occur. This hundred pelvics is not mostly seen in female. This type of pelvics is mostly seen in male. So if you see a female carrying this type of pelvics, definitely vagina birth will be difficult because of the attributes that comes with it. Then the third type of pelvics is the anthropoid pelvics. These names is derived from apes. So most apes are seen to carry this type of pelvics. So the pelvic inlet or the pelvic brain that we describe as the basis onto which the entire pelvic cavity is subdivided into the greater pelvics above and the lesser pelvics below is seen to be oval in shape. But this oval configuration is directed anterior posteriorly. And this is what is highlighted here in red. So you see it it's over configuration, but it's directed towards the anterior posterior part. And this is why you see that this type of pelvis is elongated. So it tends to be elongated and also narrow. In the anthropoid pelvis, we also have a less wider pubic hack, and this is what is elected here in black. And if the pubic hack is less wider, it means it's also going to be altering the pelvic heartlet, which will also be less wider. Vaginal bed may be seen to occur with women carrying this type of pelvics. If it does occur, labor will last longer than normal. Then the last type of pelvis is the platypeloid pelvis. Also in the platypeloid pelvics, we have the pelvic inlet, which is also referred to as the pelvic brain, also seen to be oval in shape. But this oval configuration is directed along the transverse plane. So this is what is seen to be highlighted here in this region. And this type of pelvis is also seen with a wider pubic hack. This is where we say we have the pubic hack here. This pubic hack in the platypeloid pelvis is seen to be wider. This is where we say we have the pubic hack here highlighted in dotted red. Because we say it is wide, it means that the ischiotuberosity will also be wider part. We have two, as we've said. We have one on one side and we have another one on the other side. And this is what is seen to be arrowed here in yellow. We also have the sacrotuberous ligament that is arrowed here in green. This will also be wide apart. So this will be wide apart, but the wideness will be along the transverse plane. Also, the sacrum in the platypeloid pelvis is seen to be short. If it is short, it means that this pelvis will be shallow. And this will translate to having a flat pelvis. So this pelvis is going to be flat because of the attributes that it presents. And this kind of pelvis is the least common. About 5% of individuals are saying to be carrying this type of pelvis. And vaginal bed will definitely be difficult. Even though space will be created, the space that will be created will be along the transverse plane. 
where the space along the anterior posterior plane will be less when compared with the transverse plane. And this type of space may not be fit enough to accommodate the head of the baby. So vagina birth will also be difficult in women carrying this type of pelvis. So thanks for watching this video.